course, we're going to talk in great detail about tonight's game, uh, about how Wickham can upset the odds, what Tottenham are going to bring to the party this evening. But I think before we go any further, we should be talking about your former England colleague, a man you know really well right from the start of your career at West Ham, our former colleague at BT Sport as well, um, Frank Lampard. First of all, do you think it would have been a different decision by Chelsea if every single week Stamford Bridge had been full of fans singing his name, which they would have been doing? Yeah, I think it, it, it brings pressure to the board, uh, to the people that make the decisions at the club. They, without the fans there, they don't have that emotional tie or they, they see that connection between the manager and the fans, which Frank no doubtedly has. has. And so he had it as a player. Everybody was clamouring for to, to come into the club. Um, the first year he'd done remarkably well, got him into the Champions League. Obviously, there was a transfer embargo. Now he's had money to spend and that brings a different pressure. And that's brought pressure and that's brought eyeballs and that's brought expectation. Um, but, but it also brings challenges as well. You can't just spend over £100 million and instantly you win games of football, no problem. It, is, it creates different kinds of challenges, but challenges nonetheless when you spend the money. But what I think it's done is it's, brought, it's taken away the, re the reality and the realism. In, and like you say, when you invest and you recruit that amount of players for that amount of money, yes, there brings extra pressure, but you cannot expect all of those players to hit the ground running now. Yeah. They need time to adjust, they need time to fit into the culture of the football club, new settings, new country, etc. To expect it to have been an immediate response from these players and an immediate jump to being a championship challenging team, I don't think was reality, if that was the expectations. And it seems that was the expectations because at the moment, Chelsea are five points off of the Champions League spot. Yeah. The narrative suggests that they're probably in a relegation fight if you listen to the media. So it, I don't think there's been realism that's really been put alongside this narrative. Do you think there's something else going on here then? Because if you're going to appoint um, an inexperienced manager, you are without doubt going to get a period where it's a little bit difficult. For him to go at the very first sign of difficulty and, and this kind of tricky run that they've been on, it makes you wonder whether this is about more than just results. There are rumours and reports about players going direct to people at the top of the club. We don't know whether that's right or not, but does it feel like something's gone on? Well, you're right with what you say there, Jake, that this is the first real dip in form uh, that's been sustained over a number of weeks um, in, the, in the Frank Lampard um, reign. So it makes you think that there, there may be some stuff behind the scenes. What we'll have to wait and see is that stuff will come out in the wash in the, in the coming days, weeks or whatever it is, and when Frank or someone at the club's willing to talk and explain what's gone on behind the scenes. But there are rumours that players were going to the, to the hierarchy and speaking and, and, and not speaking positively about Frank, etc. Whether that's true or not, that's rumours. But with football, rumours seem to spread out of clubs and normally there's a little bit, there's not no smoke without fire a lot of the time. But listen, Frank Lampard, I'm sure I know, went into this job very aware. He's an intelligent fellow, as we, as we both know, that this job could be here today, gone tomorrow. Yeah. Because it, the, the, that has been the culture at the club for many, many, many years gone before Frank came here. So he was well aware of that. And you've been at clubs where managers have come in with a, a kind of ambition to change the culture and clear away some of the dead wood, maybe to um, promote the youth through to the first team, change the to total culture of the football club. That's not a linear process, is it? There's always going to be... It's an inevitability there'll be dips and there'll be struggles at times. Yeah, there will. And, and I think Franks was trying to create a legacy on, on the back of the foundations of youngsters coming into the team. They've got a fantastic youth system there, you've set up. He was starting to make sure that the young players that came through at the club were getting chances and saw a pathway into the first team. But he wasn't able to carry that out for a sustained period of time. And, and, and I think some, sometimes owners of football clubs, you only have to look other teams and what they're doing. I think Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is a great example. Mm. Probably a few weeks ago, people were clamouring for him to be relieved of his duties. The club stuck with him. Now, Man United are sitting pretty at the top of the Premier League. So time, which is not always afforded to these managers, is, is, need, is, is, is yeah. something I think that is needed for people to be able to flourish. OK, so another change. The talk is of Thomas Tuchel coming in.